Hello and welcome, or welcome back, to my channel. My name is S, and I make Rampai minigame tutorials. And for this month, I have a few more patrons I'd like to thank, and that is Karina, Dana Jackson, and Double Deadline. So thank you so much for joining and supporting my work in my channel. And also, thank you so much to all of my other patrons as well for supporting my channel. So last week, I got a comment from one of my viewers of the drag and drop inventory tutorial, who was wondering if I could do an updated video about how to switch scenes without having environment items carrying over from one scene into the other. And that is a problem that you can easily have if you are unsure of how to fix it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to switch scenes without having environment items carrying over. And I'm also, as a bonus, going to show you how you can have a piece of dialogue shown before you switch to another scene. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, you're going to need to open up your drag and drop inventory script. And for this video, we're going to create a second scene, which we're going to fill with new environment items. And that is going to be a hat, a shoe, and a bag of money. And the images for these items are, as usual, going to be available to download in the description box below. And we are also going to be using a different background image for scene 2. And all of these images that we're going to be using in this video are created by other people, where the background image is made by a user on the Lemosoft forums by the name Mugen Johnson, and the item images are images from pixabay.com. And I highly recommend that you visit Mugen Johnson's Lemosoft thread where he has listed all of his free-to-use background images for visual novels that you can use in your personal and commercial games if you want. But please also make sure that you read through his post so that you are well informed about how you can use his images. So with that said, I'm going to guide you through the new code that you need to add into your inventory script. So first of all, we're going to modify this inventory item names list to add the new items that the user should be able to pick up into their inventory from scene 2. And as I said before, this is going to be a hat, a shoe, and money. So you're going to add hat, shoes, and money into the inventory item names list. And that is so that when the user picks up these items and then wants to inspect them, they can then see that the hat is a hat, the shoe is shoes in this case, and the money bag is money. Once you have done that, you're going to scroll up to the setup scene one label up here and underneath the environment items list where we have filled all of the correct environment items for scene one we're going to create a new python block that looks like this in this python block we are iterating through each of the environment sprites and then we are destroying those items from the list that is to make sure that each item that are in the environment sprites list that comes from another scene is going to first of all be removed before we go ahead and add the correct items that goes for this scene down here. So the only new code that you're going to add to this label is this Python block right here. So you're going to create a for loop where you're iterating through each item in the environment sprites list. Then you're going to call the destroy method of a sprite object by saying item.destroy and that is going to destroy the sprite from the sprite manager. Then, because we have changed the content of the environment sprite manager, we're going to have to redraw it. So that is what we're doing down here by saying environment sm dot redraw, and then we're sending in zero as the parameter to the redraw method. Then we also need to make sure that we are emptying the environment sprites list after the for loop has finished, and that is to make sure that the sprites list is going to start again from the beginning. Then after that, we are making sure that we are resetting the i overlap variable as well as the ie overlap variable. And these variables, as you might remember, we are using in order to determine whether or not an inventory item is overlapping another inventory item, or if an inventory item is overlapping an environment item. And the reason why we are resetting these is just to make sure that once we have moved to another scene, the environment items in that scene is going to be able to receive clicks right away. And if we don't, then we're going to notice that when we are clicking on an item the first time, nothing is going to happen until the second time. So to make sure that that is going to work, we need to reset these variables right here. So that is going to be all of the code necessary for the setup scene one label. And now we're going to create the second label that is going to set up scene two instead. 
So for that, you can go ahead and copy paste this whole label and its content underneath, like so. And then you're going to rename the label to setup scene 2 instead. Then for the environment items list, just underneath here, you're going to fill this with the items for scene 2. So in this case, it's shoes, hat, and money. And you want to write the names of the items for this list the same way as you have named them inside of the file names. Then you're going to go down into the second Python block right here. And in here, you just want to make sure that you're changing the if statements to check for the correct items for this scene. So you're going to check if item is equal to shoes and then place this item according to where the shoes should be placed in scene two. And then the same for hat and money. And then remember to also update the height and the width of these items according to their image size with the width and height attributes for the sprites. And you can of course pause the video and copy what I have written here, or you can also look through the updated inventory script available in the Patreon post where the other inventory script is also available. And a link to that post is available in the description box below. Now we're going to scroll up into the init Python block where we have the environment events function. So let's do that. So somewhere up here, right here. So in the environment events function, where we have the elif statement that is checking if we have a mouse button up event happening in the game. In here, we're going to add some more if statements to check if the item that the user has just clicked on is of type shoes, money, or hat, just as we have done before with the key, lantern, box, and door finds. And in these cases, when the user has clicked on one of these items, we are simply just going to add them into the inventory. So we're going to say add to inventory and then pass in shoes as the item wrapped in a list like so. And if the item is money instead, we're going to add money. And if it's hat, then we're going to add hat. And just make sure that you're adding each of these if statements as elif statements. Now there's actually one more thing that we need to do inside of the setup scene 2 label that I forgot to show you. So we're going to scroll back down till we find it. So right here. So here at the bottom, we of course want to use the correct background image for this scene. So you just want to make sure that you are switching this to whatever background image that you want to use. And for this tutorial, we are using an image called scene 2 BT. So that is what I have written here. And then we're going to call screen scene 2 instead of scene 1 down here. And then we're going to scroll up till we find the screen scene 1 right here. And as you can see, instead of here, I have added a button that is going to allow us to go directly to scene 2 by jumping to setup scene 2. And then I have created another screen that I've called scene 2. And this one's content is the exact same as scene 1 as we have the environment sprite manager at the top right here, and then a button that is going to lead us back to scene one. So in this way, just for this video's sake, it's going to be easy for us to switch between the two scenes to see if the environment items are going to behave correctly. But in your game, you probably don't want a button that says go back on it or go to scene two, but you would rather want an image button or a hotspot, for example, that the user can click on in order to go to another scene. But in this case, we're using buttons with some text on it just because it's going to be quick and easy for us to test if this is going to work correctly. But I'm also going to show you how you can make sure that once you have unlocked the door by removing the vines from it to show a piece of dialogue and then directly go to scene 2. So to do that, we are going to go back up into the init python block and specifically to the inventory events function that is up here. And right where we have the elif statement, where we are checking if the two items being combined is the secateur and the door vines, we are first of all going to have the character say something with the character say function right here. And then we're going to directly after that jump to the next scene. And to do that, we are simply going to add a third parameter to the character say function that we're going to call jump to. And that is going to have a value that represents the label that we want to jump to. In this case, we're going to jump to setup scene 2. So we're saying jump to is equal to setup scene 2. Now, if you don't want the character to say something before you switch to the next scene, you can simply just jump directly. 
and for that you would just omit using this character save function at all and you would instead write rampi dot jump and then in quotation marks you would then name the scene that you want to jump to so in this case it would be setup scene 2 like so but for this video since we are going to have the character say something first we're going to remove this and just make sure that we have a third parameter that we are calling jump to together with the label that we want to jump to and then we're going to go down into the character say function right here and in here we're going to make sure that the third parameter is added to the function so right here you can see i've written jump to is equal to none so the reason why we're saying jump to is equal to none is to make sure that none is the default value in case you choose to not supply a value to the jump to parameter and in that way you don't have to if you don't want to and that is the same with this parameter right here where we are saying inspect item is equal to false it just means that the inspect item parameter can be left out when we are calling this function and it will instead just use this value as the default value now in order to make sure that we can jump to the correct label after the character has said something we're going to make sure that in this line right here where we are calling the screen character say we're going to add the parameter that we added up here into here as well but the difference here is that we are saying jump to is equal to jump to instead of jump to is equal to none and that simply means that we are passing on the jump to parameters value from the character say function to the character say screen and then we're doing the same thing down here where we are instead showing the screen character say so we're saying jump to is equal to jump to and then you're going to scroll down into the character say screen so right here and in here you want to make sure that you're adding this jump to parameter to this function right here and we're doing the same thing here we're saying jump to is equal to none then at the bottom here we have the button that allows us to progress the dialogue or to hide the character say screen once the dialogue has finished and in here we're going to add another action that is going to allow us to jump to the label that we have supplied to the jump to parameter but we only want to jump to the label if we have supplied it because if it is none instead then that means that we don't want to jump and therefore we don't want to do anything specific after we have hidden the character say screen so to do that we're going to go to the first action right here and inside of this false parameter right here we're going to add a third action so after we have hidden the character say screen and we have set the dialog variable back to an empty dictionary then we're going to add a third action right here that says if jump to is not none so as long as the jump to parameter does not have a none value then we're going to say true is equal to and then we're going to jump to the value of the jump to parameter and to do that we're using the jump action and then we're supplying a string with two curly brackets inside of it so that we can format the string to contain the value of the jump to parameter and to do that we of course add two quotation marks and then two curly brackets inside of that and then we're using the format function like so and supply the jump to parameter as the value but now if jump to happens to be none instead then that means that we don't want to jump to a label so in that case we just say false is equal to null action and then down here for this action you're going to do the same thing so instead of just having the return true action you're going to add a second action which is the same as you did before so you can copy paste this if action right here and then paste it here just make sure that you're wrapping these two actions in a list by adding two square brackets around them like so now this one last thing that you need to do before we are completely done and that is to make sure that we are not adding an environment item to a scene if it has already been picked up and therefore removed from the environment and to do that we're going to create a new list that we're going to fill with each item that we are removing from the environment so for that you're going to scroll back down into the start label and in here you're going to create a new list which i have in this case called environment items deleted so you're going to say environment items deleted is equal to an empty list 
and then you're going to scroll back up into the init python block and find the remove environment item function so right here and in here as you can see i've added a line that says environment items deleted dot append and then item type so we are filling this environment items deleted list with the item type that was just removed from the environment. Now with this list, we're going to compare each item in it to the item that we want to add to a scene to see if we should add it or not, because if that item already exists in this list, then we don't want to add it to the environment. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the setup scene one label first. So right here. And in here, in the second Python block, right here, after the for loop, right here, I have added an if statement that says, if item not in environment items deleted. So here we're checking if the item in this for loop right here does not exist in the environment items deleted list, then we can go ahead and add the item to the scene. So you want to make sure that you add this line after the for loop right here and then make sure that you indent all of the code that goes underneath one step to the right. And then you're going to do the same thing for setup scene two. So down here, you're going to add the if statement after the for loop here as well. So with these changes done, let's go ahead and launch the game to see what this looks like. So here inside of the game, we can now see in scene one that we have this button that says go to scene two. So we can either click on that to go directly to scene 2, or we can open up the door by removing the vines. So let's go ahead and first of all open up the door with the secretary. So we're going to add a key to the inventory, and then open up the box to get the secretary. And then we're going to open up the door with the secretary. And as we can see, we still get a dialog at the bottom of the screen. And then if we click with the mouse, we're going to go to scene 2. And in scene two, we have a shoe, a hat, and a bag of money. And we can also tell that the lantern from scene one has not carried over to scene two because we made sure to remove all of the environment sprites from the environment sprites list before we switched to the next scene. So now we can go ahead and add an item from this scene. So let's go ahead and do the hat, for example. And then we're going to go back to scene one. And as we can see here, the lantern is back where it was and none of the other items is here, such as the items from scene 2 or the old items from scene 1. And we still have the hat in the inventory and the matches. And now we can go to scene 2 directly again with this button. And in here, everything is as it should. And then we go back to scene 1 again. And everything is as it should in here as well. And that is all of the changes that we need to do to the script in order to make sure that we can switch scenes without having environment items carrying over from scene to scene and also to make sure that we can have a piece of dialogue show before we jump to another scene. If you have any questions or something is unclear, you can always leave a comment in the description box below. And also remember, I have uploaded this updated script on my Patreon and the link to that is in the description box below. So you can always open up that script and have a look at it together with this video to compare what we have changed and why we're doing it. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.